السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على نبي الرحمة والهدى محمد الأمين وعلى آله وصحبه الطيبين الطاهرين ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين وبعد Brothers and sisters, we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we praise him upon all conditions, we ask him to send blessings and salutations upon Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his entire household, all his companions. May Allah bless them all and grant them every form of goodness and may he bless us all and grant us every form of goodness in our lives and even after we have left this world. Ameen. Brothers and sisters, we are continuing with the names of the ten from amongst those who were told they are from paradise, known as Al-Asharah, Al-Mubasharah, or Al-Mubasharina bil Jannah. This evening, inshallah, we will be looking at the lives of two of these heroes. The first being Abdurrahman ibn Awf, radiyallahu an, and the second being Sa'ad ibn Abi Waqqas, radiyallahu an. As for Abdurrahman ibn Awf, he was known for his wealth. When he was young, he was not so wealthy. He accepted Islam at a very early age. In fact, it is reported that he was 10 years younger than Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he was approximately 30 when Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had nubuwa. So it was, he was not that young, but at the same time, he was from amongst the top eight to accept Islam. Abdul Rahman ibn Awf, he accepted Islam prior to the Muslims going into the house of Al-Arqam ibn Abi Al-Arqam. He was one of those who struggled at the hands of the Kuffar of Quraysh. The disbelievers had harmed those who had accepted Islam initially. And from amongst them was this particular man, Abdurrahman ibn Awf. He was one of those who migrated to Africa at the beginning. Right at the beginning, he migrated to Africa. He came back. And he migrated again to Africa with the second group of those who migrated to Africa. Then when he returned, he had migrated to Al-Madin Al-Munawwara. A very interesting story occurred as soon as he arrived. A very interesting story occurred as soon as he arrived in Al-Madinah Al-Munawwara. The Prophet Wasallam had fostered a relationship of brotherhood between him and Sa'd ibn Rabi'ah. Sa'd ibn Rabi' radiallahu an was an Ansari. And he was a man who had some property, he had a bit of wealth, and he had two wives. So he looks at Abdurrahman ibn Awf, who was a very young person, he had just come in, and he had nothing. Abdurrahman ibn Awf had absolutely nothing on that day. And he told Abdurrahman, you know, I am so happy that you have come. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, has made mention of how important it is to look after you, our brothers who have come from Mecca. I will give you half of my wealth. I will give you half of my property. And at the same time, I have two wives. If you would like, I will divorce one of them and you may marry her. Subhanallah. But Abdurrahman ibn Awf declined. He declined the offer. He said, I thank you very much for this. And subhanallah, he was one of those who told Sa'd ibn Rabi' show me to the marketplace. Show me to the marketplace. And the same day he went out to the marketplace and he made a dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He worked hard and he came back with some profit and he went back the following day. And in a few days time he had enough wealth, subhanallah. He had enough wealth to get married himself. So he proposed to marry a certain woman. He gave her a certain amount of gold and he got married to her. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam saw Abdurrahman ibn Awf and told him, Oh Abdurrahman, I notice a mark on your clothing. It was a mark of perfume. A mark of perfume. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, What happened? It was not so common for people to put on perfume. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam asked him this question. He says, Oh Messenger, I got married. Subhanallah. I want to stop there for a few minutes. If we were not invited to the weddings of our friends, we would stop talking to them for the rest of our lives. This was Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He was not even invited to this nikah. Because my brothers and sisters, marriage is something you do not delay. When the two are happy, you get them married. If you are to delay, you are encouraging and promoting promiscuity and adultery and wrong behavior. 
So this is something Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam practiced. He did not feel bad. Nobody felt bad. It was such a small occasion. His, one of his main companions had just got married and nobody knew about it besides the witnesses and perhaps a few who might have been there at the occasion itself. But Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam found out later. So he did not feel bad. He did not shout him, scold him. He says, what did you give her in terms of mahar? Because he knew that these people came from Makkah with nothing. How did Abdul Rahman ibn Auf manage? He says, oh messenger, I did a bit of business from the day I came and I managed to get some gold and that's what I gave her. Then he said, have you had a little party known as a walima? Have you invited a few people and fed them out of happiness? He says, no, he says, Awlim walaw bishah. That's the famous narration of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Have a walima, even if it means with one sheep, with one little animal. So this was Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam instructing Abdurrahman ibn Awf. And mashallah, the instruction and the lesson is for us all to have a simple walima, that wherein there is no disobedience of Allah. Because then the barakah comes through, the blessings come through. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam made a dua for Abdurrahman ibn Awf. And I believe this dua was the changing factor in the life of Abdurrahman ibn Awf, the turning point. He says, Barakallahu laka fi malika wa ahlik. May Allah grant you blessings, barakah in your wealth and in your family. Subhanallah, Abdurrahman ibn Awf, what a blessed man. Because he got married in the correct way. He was married when he did not really own much. I've said this and I repeat it. Some of us today, we look for husbands or spouses who are already so wealthy that they would have to be 50 years old before we could actually marry them. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us ease. These people, they looked at the responsibility of the individual. If they have had responsible behavior with good character and conduct and they had the deen and the religion in them, they got them married. This was something that they looked into and they earned their livelihood thereafter. Abdurrahman ibn Awf, he says, that dua upon the occasion of my marriage that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had gave me was so powerful, so powerful that wallahi the, uh, the world came to my feet. The material wealth of this world came to my feet, subhanallah. And he says, if I moved a stone, I would find underneath it gold or silver. This was Abdurrahman ibn Auf. He took part in the battle of Badr and he did well. He took part in the battle of Uhud and he did very well. But as for his wealth, he earned so much, he became so wealthy that he was one of those whom when the caravans were seen far away from Medina, they immediately knew this is the caravan of Abdurrahman ibn Auf. He was one of those who competed with Uthman ibn Affan radiallahu an. He had so much of wealth, even Uthman ibn Affan once saw the caravan of Abdurrahman ibn Auf when he was returning from his own journey. He looked at it and he said, that is a man whom Allah has blessed with a lot of wealth. Yet when he made hijrah, he had absolutely nothing. When he got married, he had very little. The first amount that he ever earned, he got married with. But the family of his wife did not say, wait, you don't have a stable job, go back. And when you have a house and a car, and when you can afford and your salary is 30,000 a month, then you can come back to us. No, but look what he had. Today, I am going to talk about figures because a lot of us look at heroes from amongst the Sahaba radiallahu anhum, and we don't realize that some of them were blessed even with the dunya, even with the worldly material life over and above their virtue that they had for the deen and religion. Some of us think that if you are religious, you will be poor. And if you are wealthy, you should not be religious. Not realizing the true heroes are those. Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana wa fil akhirati hasana wa qina adaban nar. Encapsulated in this dua taught by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Oh Allah, grant us goodness in this world. Grant us goodness in the life after and protect us from the fire. May Allah free us from the fire of Jahannam. So Abdurrahman ibn Awf, every single time Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was collecting wealth for any expedition or for anything for that matter, he had given and he donated and gave a lot. He gave percentage-wise and quantity-wise. So on one occasion, he gave 
40,000 dirhams. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam asked him, what have you brought? What have you left for your family? He says, O Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, this is half of my wealth and I've left half. The Prophet made another dua sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He says, Barakallahu laka fima a'tayt wa fima tarakt. May Allah grant you barakah in that which you have given, meaning may the reward be multiplied, and may Allah grant you barakah in that which you have left and you have kept with yourself. And he says, I just remember that dua of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And each time I gave, I got more. Every time I gave wealth, I actually came up with much more than I gave. So he says during the battle of Tabuk, he gave 200 ounces of gold. This was Abdurrahman ibn Awf. Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu was competing. You know, on that day, he brought 50% of his wealth. So he looked and he uttered a statement, obviously saying, O Messenger, it's a sin what Abdurrahman has done. He's brought everything and he left nothing for his family. So he, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam asked Abdurrahman ibn Awf, Ya Abdurrahman, what have you left for your family? He says, don't worry, I have left a lot of goodness. I left what Allah has promised me. And I left what the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has promised me. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness. So after the death of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Abdurrahman ibn Awf's wealth was known. But more than his wealth being known, he was known for his humbleness. They say that he had so many workers and slaves who worked for him, but nobody knew the difference between him and them. When he was with them, they had to actually ask, who is Abdurrahman from amongst these? This is the simplicity of the man, Abdurrahman ibn Awf. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us also simplicity. He decided, I am the one who's going to look after the wives of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So he traveled with them wherever they went. He ensured that he had the best of camels for them. And he made sure that they rode on those beautiful camels where he had put great mats and mattresses. And he had the coverings of those camels in the most beautiful way so that they would be protected from the sun. And he ensured that he was at their service wherever they went, whenever they went, wherever they went. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant him goodness. The wives of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had so much respect for this man. They trusted him so much, so much. They knew that this Abdurrahman ibn Awf has been truthful to his promise to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he has spent on them so much so that we will come to learn what he did in his will and who he bequeathed his wealth for. Subhanallah. Let's listen to what happened. But before we get to that, he had a piece of land that he sold for 40,000 dinars. A dinar is a gold coin. And when he received the amount, he went out looking for the family of the mother of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Amina binti Wahab. He was from the same clan as well. And he went to the, her relatives and he gave them a healthy amount each. And he went to each one of the wives of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and gave them a gift, an amount each. And he went looking for the poor. The poor did not have to ask Abdurrahman ibn Awf. He knew who they were. He had a relationship with them. He went out to them and he always considered it an honor to be spending upon the poor. Sometimes when we give the poor, we think we have done them a favor. Abdurrahman ibn Awf used to consider that they have done him a favor by accepting a charitable deed. May Allah grant us goodness. Then there is the famous story similar to that of Uthman ibn Affan and Talha ibn Ubaidillah. May Allah's peace and blessings be upon them all and us too. Where 700 camels had entered Medina, full of stock, full of wealth, full of merchandise, food and so many other things. And Aisha radiallahu anha asked, why are the people of Medina so excited? So she was told that that is Abdurrahman ibn Awf. His caravan of 700 camels has just entered Medina. So she made a dua. She said, may Allah grant him barakah in whatever he has got in this world. But what he is going to get in the hereafter is far greater and far better. So when he heard this dua, he was so touched by it. He rushed to Aisha radiallahu anha. And he said, oh Aisha, oh my beloved mother, I make you bear witness that all these 700 camels and whatever they hold, are given for the benefit of the Muslims of Medina Munawwara. Anyone who is needy, please come and help yourselves. Subhanallah. 
May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness. So many of the companions of Allah, subhan of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, have done this. So many of his companions have done this. So this was Abdurrahman ibn Auf. Let us listen to some of the charities he gave. On one occasion, 40,000 gold coins. Another occasion, 40,000 silver coins. Some of us don't even have one coin. May Allah grant us ease and goodness. Allahu Akbar. And these were the companions. We look at them and we say, those who accepted Islam, I wonder what they had. Well, look at this. Subhanallah. Today you will get a shock. My brothers and sisters, when you think of wealth and the companions, the first name that should come to mind, Abdurrahman ibn Auf, and then Uthman ibn Affan, radiallahu anhum. May Allah's peace and blessings be upon them. On one occasion, or on several occasions, he gave out 200 ounces of gold when it was needed. Sometimes on one occasion, he gave out 500 stallions when they were needed. 1,500 camels on one occasion, he gave out. Imagine 1,500 motor vehicles, so to speak, because a camel was conveyance. Today, I don't think the production of huge mobile, meaning uh, motor vehicle companies, I don't think their production would probably go beyond 1,500 in the week or in the month and maybe even beyond. May Allah grant us ease. So this was the man, Abdurrahman ibn Auf. Close to his death, he started freeing his slaves one by one. And what happened? He wrote for the people who took part in the battle of Badr who remained. He was one of them. But he wrote all those who took part in the battle of Badr and they have remained, they are alive. Each one of them should get one should get 400 gold coins. And they were 100 of them, which means 40,000 gold coins were given at the time that Abdurrahman ibn Auf died, distributed to those who were the remainder of the people who took part in the battle of Badr. Why did he give those? Because to him, to give those who are pious, to give those who are good was an honor to look after those who, who were looking after the deen, whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had already spoken very highly of. You know, the people of Badr, they had a rank that was unique. Subhanallah, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam on one occasion said, وَمَا يُدْرِيكَ لَعَلَّ اللَّهَ اطَّلَعَ عَلَىٰ أَهْلِ بَدْرٍ فَقَالْ إِعْمَلُوا مَا شِئْتُمْ فَإِنِّي قَدْ غَفَرْتُ لَكُمْ How do you know? Perhaps Allah has looked at the hearts of those who took part in the battle of Badr. And he said, do as you please from this day. I have forgiven you completely. So this was Abdurrahman ibn Auf. Then they found that he had left a large amount of wealth for each one of the remainders of the wives of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And on top of that, subhanallah, he left wealth for so many other, for so many other good causes. And then they looked at what he left for his family. Okay? Because obviously you are not allowed to bequeath more than one third of your wealth. They looked at what he left for his family. What do you think he left? Do you want to hear the figures? Let's listen. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. 1,000 camels they found, 100 stallions. This was after they had given whatever was already bequeathed. 3,000 sheep. And then he had four wives. They had to share one eighth between them, which means they were getting approximately three and a half percent of his wealth. When they counted three and a half percent of his wealth to give each one of those four women, they each got 80,000 gold coins, subhanallah, subhanallah, which makes it approximately 2.6 or 2.4 million gold coins that he had left. Abdurrahman ibn Auf, what a man, what a man. And yet, subhanallah, this was the dua, simplicity of marriage. He had a very simple marriage. And that is the occasion upon which Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam made a dua. Look at what happened. It is reported that once he was seated and he began to cry because it was the time of breaking his fast and there was so much food in front of him. They asked him, Oh Abba Muhammad, why are you crying? He said, Wallahi, I'm thinking of Mus'ab ibn Umair. We buried him and there was nothing to cover him properly. And I'm thinking of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam being the best of creation and the Nabi of Allah, the Prophet of Allah. He never had food like this that is in front of me. And I fear that perhaps Allah might be giving me this in my life. I hope he gives me something in paradise as well. And he called the people and he let them share from his food because he could not eat alone. He was a simple man. So this was the man at his deathbed. He said, I fear that perhaps I will be delayed in joining the rest of the companions because I've had so much wealth. I need to give account for everything that I have. 
May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us as conscious. A lot of us have far less, but we are not even worried about the accountability to Allah. We are more worried about the tax man and whether he will catch us. May Allah grant us ease. So Aisha radiallahu anha made him the main offer. The offer which was the cherry on the cake for Abdurrahman ibn Auf. She said, Oh Abdurrahman, I offer you to be buried next to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and my father and Umar ibn al-Khattab. I offer you to be buried in my own home. He turned down the offer. He did not want to be known as a person of that rank. He knew that the simplicity would grant him Jannah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless him and may he grant us all at least a little bit of barakah in our wealth. But remember, wealth comes by the obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Brothers and sisters, the next hero that we are going to speak about, also another man who had a lot of wealth. Sa'd ibn Abi Waqqas radiallahu an. His name was Sa'd ibn Malik. So Abu Waqqas, his name was Malik. This man, he was the uncle of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam because he was related being a second cousin of the mother of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Amina binti Wahab. And from this we learn that even if someone is the cousin of your father or mother or the second cousin, you would still be correct to call them an aunt or an uncle. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us with goodness of relation. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam loved him. Although he was much younger than Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, approximately 23 to 25 years younger than Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to look at him and say, this is my uncle. Can any one of you show me an uncle of yours similar to Sa'ad ibn Abi Waqqas? Allahu Akbar. This was the honor granted to him. How did he accept Islam? It was a miracle. He was sleeping one night and he saw a dream that he was drowning in darkness upon darkness. And then he saw the moon. And when he rushed towards the moon because he did not want to be drowning in the darkness, he saw that Abu Bakr was sitting at the moon. And Ali ibn Abi Talib radiallahu anhu was sitting in the moonlight. And Zayd ibn Haritha sitting in the moonlight. And he told the three of them, how long have you been here in the moon for? I was drowning. So they told him, we've just come right now. In the morning he got up and he heard that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had declared that he was a Nabi of Allah. He was a prophet of Allah. And so he went to inquire and exactly as his dream, exactly as his dream, he found Abu Bakr, as siddiq radiallahu an, Ali ibn Abi Talib and Zayd ibn Haritha radiallahu an. Zayd ibn Haritha radiallahu an. He found these three and immediately he knew this is the dream I had. He spoke to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he accepted Islam. From this we learn that some people are guided through the dreams that they have. May Allah grant us good dreams. A lot of us, I think we have nightmares because we forget to even say the dua before we sleep. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us better Muslimin. Then when he accepted Islam, he was, he was literally what we would term so close to his mother. Some would say he was a mummy's baby. Literally, his mother loved him so much. He, she would not let go of him. And he loved his mother so dearly. She looked at him and said, how can you accept Muhammad? I'm not going to eat. I'm not going to drink until you quit Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So he continued to be good to her. Oh, my mother, don't do this. And she continued to become sick and ill. She neither drank nor did she eat until a few days had passed and she was so sick and ill. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam kept telling him, speak to your mother, be kind to her. Do not be bad to her and so on. And then when she was more or less on her deathbed, so to speak. She looked at him and said, won't you have mercy on your mother? He said, oh, my mother, I'm telling you, you're wasting your time. If you had a hundred lives, why would you lose them? I would allow you to lose one after the other, but I would not leave Muhammad. I tell you what I believe is correct. So you'd better start eating because if you don't, you're going to die. And his mother started eating because she realized that there is no value of what I'm doing. This man is not going to change. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed verses regarding what Sa'd ibn Abi Waqqas did. The verses of Surah Luqman where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, if your parents are trying to make you engage in shirk or associate partners with Allah, return you from your deen or make you sin against Allah, then that is when you do not follow what they are saying. But 
you must be kind to them in this world. You continue to be kind to your parents even if they are non-Muslim. This is the instruction of the Quran and this is the instruction of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and this is what was done by Sa'd ibn Abi Waqqas radiallahu an. Now, he took part in the battle of Badr and there is a beautiful story of how his brother whose name was Umair ibn Abi Waqqas was younger than the age of 15 and when Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was looking at the people to ensure there are no children in their midst, Umair ibn Abi Waqqas was hiding behind his brother Sa'ad so that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam does not see him. But Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam saw him and told him, Umair, you may return, you are young. So he began to cry and he pleaded with Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam allowed him and he was martyred, the youngster in the battle of Badr. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant him Jannah and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us all Jannah as well. But Sa'd ibn Abi Waqqas lived through and he continued, he took part in the battle of Uhud. He was known as the most Meaning the one who could aim the best from amongst the Sahaba radiallahu anhum. He was an archer who never missed his target. This was Sa'd ibn Abi Waqqas radiallahu anhu. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam made a dua for him on the day of Uhud. Allahumma saddid ramyatah wa ajib da'watah. Oh Allah, make him an archer who always gets what he is aiming at. You Meaning straighten his bow, his arrow. Straighten his arrow. And oh Allah, Make him a person whom whenever he calls out to you, you respond to him. So it was known that Sa'd ibn Abi Waqqas, whenever he made a dua, it was accepted. Subhanallah. Whenever he made a dua, it was accepted. So much so later on in his life, he heard a man speaking bad about Ali ibn Abi Talib and Az-Zubayr ibn al-Awwam and Talha ibn Ubaidillah because of the problem that occurred between them. So he told the man, keep quiet. The man says, who do you think you are? He said, look, keep quiet. I don't want to ask Allah. To, to do something to you that will make you keep quiet. He said, you think you are threatening me, do what you want. So because he did not like the fact that they were speaking bad about the companions of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Sa'ad ibn Abi Qas radiallahu anhu read two rak'at of salah and he asked Allah, oh Allah, oh Allah, stop that man from speaking bad in whatever way you wish. No sooner did he make that dua, a camel or a beast or an animal, came rushing for the man after some time and injured him and dropped him and the man actually died. And the people knew this was Sa'ad. Don't mess with him. Allahu Akbar. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us ease and goodness. Sa'ad ibn Abi Waqqas. Let me tell you what happened. In Hajjatul Wada' when the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was in Hajj, Sa'ad ibn Abi Waqqas radiallahu anhu became ill, so ill that he thought he was going to die and already he had quite a bit of wealth. So he says, O Messenger, I've got so much wealth and I've only got one heir. That is my daughter. Nobody else do I have who's going to take my wealth. So I want to donate all my wealth in the cause of Allah. The Prophet ﷺ refused. So he said, okay, let me donate half of it. He refused. He said, okay, let me donate a third of it. Then the Prophet ﷺ made the famous statement regarding inheritance. A thuluthu wa thuluthu kathir. Oh Sa'ad. A third, a third of donation is more than enough. You are not allowed to bequeath more than a third. It is better for you to leave your heirs wealthy than to leave them beggars who shall be asking from the people. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us. One of the narrations of Sa'ad. But he got better after that, mashallah, and he had many children thereafter. Like Abdurrahman ibn Awf, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed him with so many children. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed him with so much because of the dua of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Just like this man, Sa'ad ibn Abi Waqqas radiallahu anhu, he used to cry a lot and he always shed tears so much so that it would make his clothing wet. This was Sa'ad ibn Abi Waqqas radiallahu anhu. One day the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told his companions that a man is going to come just now. A man is going to come just now. He who walks through is from paradise. So the people looked around to see who is going to come in. Who walked in? Sa'ad ibn Abi Waqqas radiallahu anhu. So Abdullah ibn Amr ibn al-As radiallahu anhu looked at him and said, O oh Sa'ad, he followed him and he says, O oh Sa'ad, tell me. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, You are from amongst those in paradise. You are from amongst those in paradise. What is it that you have done, O oh Sa'ad, that we don't do? So he looked at Abdullah ibn Amr. Ibn al-As and he said, Oh my little son, I tell you something. There is nothing much that I do. I don't do much more than you. But what I need to tell you, 
Every night I ensure that I have no hatred, grudge or ill feeling against any of my brethren. I clean my heart. So he had a clean heart, he had a clean tongue and he had clean wealth. For those three to get together in a person, not so easy, subhanallah. Clean wealth, clean heart and clean tongue. He did not speak bad about anyone and he always loved everyone. He no matter what disputes they had, he did not hold a grudge in his heart against them. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us a lesson. He was the great conqueror who went to Persia at the time of Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu. When we hear of the battle of Nahawand and the battle of Qadisiyah, the name that comes to mind is Sa'd ibn Abi Waqqas, the great leader and the conqueror. He was also appointed the governor of Kufa and Najd at one stage during the time of Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu. And he passed away. He passed away in al Madinah al munawwara at the age of 80. And he was one of the last who passed away from amongst the Muhajireen. And he was the last to pass away from the 10 who were blessed with paradise. And I want to end with a beautiful story, something that happened during the time when he was about to die. His head was in the laps of his son. And his son was crying profusely. The father was approximately 80 years old. And the son is crying. So Sa'ad ibn Abi Waqqas radiallahu anhu, he looks at his son and he says, Oh my son, why are you crying? Are you worried that your father is going to go? He says, Oh my son, don't worry. I promise you, Allah will never punish me. And I know I am from paradise. Imagine he had so much of hope in Allah. May Allah grant us some hope. He says, Allah will not punish me. I know that I am from Jannah. But there is one thing I request from you, my son. Open my certain closet that I have and bring from it what you see. When the son went to that place and brought the little box, he took out a garment that was made of wool. And the, the, this man, Sa'ad ibn Abi Waqqas, he had taken part in so many of the battles. He says, oh my son, when I die, and when you enshroud me, use this, oh my son, because this is the clothing that I had on me on the day of Badr. <laughs> and I would like to meet Allah with the clothing that I had on myself on the day of Badr. And I hope that Allah will grant me Jannah as a result. I took part in that battle and we were approximately 313. And Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam gave us good news. And I definitely do know that when I meet Allah, I would like this garment to be on me. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless him. May he bless all of us. May we have some deeds at least my brothers and sisters that tomorrow when we are on our deathbeds, we can think of the good we've done and we can say, Oh Allah, have mercy on me and forgive the bad that we've done. Wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabina Muhammad. Subhanallah wa bihamdih. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdika nashadu an la ilaha illa ant. Nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayk.